Thank you for listening to the Waters Run Deep podcast. Check us out on YouTube and follow us on Instagram at TWRD underscore podcast. If you have a topic suggestion or would just like to send us a nasty gram, email us at thewatersrundeeppodcast.com. Please remember to rate and review on your platform of choice. It really helps us out with the algorithms to get new listeners to check us out. If you leave us a five-star review, we will read it on an episode and send you out some TWRD stickers. Till next time, run deep. All right, welcome to another episode. I'm joined with Angela, Amanda, and Adam, and we're kind of just going to do a recap of... Oh, we're getting started early. Going to do a recap of the last two seasons and uh, kind of tie any, everything together to get through. Um, yeah, I fucked that up. Mm-hmm. Lost, my, lost my train of thought. About to clip that out. Anyway, um, I just want to remind everybody to rate and review on your platform of choice. It helps us out. And please uh, tell your friends, family, coworkers, all that fun stuff. Check us out. And with that, we're going to give it over to Amanda to start Wacky World News. So we have two news stories today. But the first, do you want to start with the one that you all know about or my surprise one? Let's start with the one that we've already talked about. Agreed. Agreed. <clears throat> okay. So recently in the news, we have learned that Red Lobster is considering considering filing bankruptcy due to an $11 million loss from its endless shrimp deal. So, I I, I know it's, I know that story. I've heard this story already. So, my thing is with that is that, I, that they did it for a while and it was like they would do it in, in like a season. So, they would have endless shrimp and then it would go away for a while and then they'd have lobster fest and that go away. It was kind of like whatever they call that. And, that made sense, you know. They they could do it with the time shrimp season, and you know, it would be cheaper. They could have, you know, it, made, it just made more sense. But I felt like they were raising the prices on everything, and I get everything, and I, I sound like the you know, get off my lawn guy right now. But I, how dare you talk about inflation? We're gonna have to make a shirt called "Get Off My Lawn." I know, and it, it, but it's true. I mean, I feel like Red Lobster was the worst. I mean. Hey, me and uh wife would go there for dinner and we would get the admiral's feast which is like lobster crab legs and all that and it was like 25 or 24 25 and it just it made sense i mean it wasn't and it was a lot of food too like it wasn't like the i think the lobster came on a bed of rice peel off so you would get that and you would get two sides and it kind of made sense but now they took that away made it less food and then jacked the price up to where I think it's over $30 now for the Admiral's Feast. Yeah, it's crazy. And I don't, I mean, it's good. I like Red Lobster, but it, it's just, to me, it's not that good, you know, to pay that kind of money. Now, granted, you're getting crab leg, lobster, shrimp, you're getting a bunch of shit, but I don't know. It is a sad day that they're going bankrupt though, but I don't think it was all of them. I think it was only like 50 some stores, right? Um, to be honest, I didn't read too much into it because I must come from the opposite side of the Waters family does, that does not enjoy Red Lobster, um, especially because I live in a landlocked state. So where are they getting that frozen yeah, Red Lobster yeah. from? No yeah. Way. Although we used to- yeah, I, I don't trust seafood out in Colorado. Um, no, Adam and I used to live by a Red Lobster when we first moved in together. And he would literally joke every time we would walk by it or drive by it that we would go in there and that's where he was going to ask me to marry him. And oh my God, time, I remember that joke now. Although I make jokes about how he did ask me to marry him, which was on our dirty kitchen floor, way better than at a Red Lobster. Way better. Hold, hold on. If you were at Red Lobster, you could have got the cheddar biscuits. I and you could have had the man. ring and the cheddar biscuits and that could have been your whole money ring box. Thank God I already said yes and we'd be married. But oh, Adam, Adam say, when you renew your vows, that's the, how you need to propose to her. No? All right. No what? comment. I don't think he's paying attention. 
Oh, at our 10th? Yes, we'll go to... Just want to do a destination. If there are still Red Lobsters for our 10th wedding anniversary in 2030, we will figure out and get married there. I imagine... They have an authentic (laughs) New York slice. (laughs) Oh, but I... Like, okay, so I don't know. The all-you-can-eat sounds lovely. I love all-you-can-eat places. Big fan of all-you-can-eat, like, lobster, crab. But for some reason, Red Lobster just doesn't seem like the place I want to go for it. Yeah, I mean, it's all-you-can-eat shrimp, and it's not even, like... To me, it's not great quality shrimp, and they're they're kind of small. And I'd rather go to Red Lobster for all-you-can-eat than Golden Corral or any sort of buffet. Yes, yes agreed. Agreed. But well, they're yeah, kind of I mean, weird like with it. On there. Yeah. They're kind of weird with it, though, because they'll bring out, they'll say you can, like, when you first order it, they'll say, all right, pick two flavors. And there's, like, six to choose from. You'll get those two flavors, and you're, like, halfway through, and they're like, oh, you know, pick pick one more to to bring another plate out. And you do, and then from that point on, like, you feel like you're, oh, there's a million jokes in there, and I just can't think of one. But you feel like you're pulling teeth to get more, you know, like, you got to beg for it almost. For most servers, some of the servers, Lisa, the I want some more. Yeah, yeah. Some like of the waitresses are cool about finding it, God and having to jump in the water for the shrimp to come out. Yeah, it's it's like, come on. Are the shrimp like soggy or like soft? It depends on which ones you get. I mean, the scampi are pretty soggy. Because, like, when I think of good shrimp, like the best shrimp I've ever had, I know you both are gonna laugh. It was from Giant and the guy like made it with Old Bay and like your dad, Chris, we ate so much shrimp that day. Like, I think we ate like three pounds of shrimp. So Holy you cow. got them steamed at, all, at Giant? Yeah, I got them steamed at Giant and Old Bay. Okay. Why, why would we laugh at you for that? I think it's the way to yeah. go. If you don't yeah, know how to cook them good. at home, why not just get it at the meat counter? Well, like we were gonna cook it at home, and then when I went to get them, the guy's like, "Oh, I can steam them here," and I was like, "Fuck yeah, please do!" Um, and then I came home with them, and Uncle Jack and I literally just sat there for hours and ate them. It was the best shrimp ever. Hmm. Hmm. We do the um. Now I want some shrimp. It's it's not the same giant, but we do the frozen um, Devane raw shrimp from Giant because they they go on sale all the time. And they're really good. I mean, we take them home and grill them 99% of the time. But they, they come out really good. The so giant shrimp's all right. I can get down with giant shrimp. So funny, giant shrimp. If you don't know, giant's a grocery store in the east. Oh, yeah. They're not literally <laughs> giant shrimp like prawns. They're just from giant. And they're kind of medium-sized shrimp. <laughs> well, you can get the jumbo shrimp. That's true. The tiger shrimp, yeah, they have those. They do have those. They're see, they're they're to me though. The bigger the shrimp, sometimes that there's no flavor. You just feel like yeah, you're eating right. meat. You know, they're fun because yeah, you only have to eat like five of them. But you, you get the normal size shrimp, and then they cook down to like half their size. That's true. As um, long as they're not like the about my experience at the casino. No. So my work took a trip to the casino. Are you laughing at my experience? Or are you laughing at him saying that? Okay. So the work, my work took us to the casino for like a work trip, like fun experience. And I went to the buffet and it was like $65 for the fucking casino buffet. And I'm not a Man. buffet fan. But what were your options for the food for the $65 buffet? Um, I'm not sure because I only ate two things. I ate my weight in lobster and I ate my weight in crab. Okay, like, that's fair. Crab. Thank you. Okay. So you get a ticket and it's like one ticket for one thing, one lobster, and then a ticket for a pound of crabs. But I sweet talked to the lady because I have the water's tongue. And I was like, Can I have more? And so she gave me three lobsters and three pounds of crab. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Crab. Hold on. If it was a buffet. Why are they capping you on how much stuff you could get? And you have so to get a ticket. the buffet for everything else but the lobster and the crab. Okay. The lobster, crab, you only get one ticket for one So lobster. that's not a buffet then. No. Well, everything else is a buffet. Like if you wanted like 
filet mignon or like Oreo cookies. I don't know. I honestly have no idea what else is on this buffet because I only ate lobster and crab. Did you know, you know, the Boston Lobster Feast or is it Boston Lobster Fest? It's the in lobster. Orlando. Oh no, my no, God. Cool. I didn't think I was um, the Boston, Boston Lobster is literally God's gift to man. Yeah. It's all you can eat whole lobster. Like the big fucker got the claws and everything. And the, and the people who are amateurs, they go and they eat the chicken and the yeah, other the stuff. Dumb shit. You don't, you Fuck don't that. eat that stuff. That is the filler. You literally go for the lobster and the fucking crap. Right. So that, that's what the I lobster. Did. That's uh-huh. what I did. And I ate the lobster and the crab and then we're gambling. And I'm like, man, this, I don't feel good. Like, Oh, the, the lobsters are barking. So by the time we got home, I'm like, Adam's like, how is the casino? And I was like, I can't duck, can't duck. Threw up the entire plate of lobster and crab. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, I rented my $65 worth of lobster and crab. I think what their problem you was. You got your money's worth. And then that's what I was laughing about. And she was going to skip over it. No, I was going to tell him just after. I think the problem is that I had too much butter. See, $65, I would have been eating them some bitches again. I I threw them up. Fuck yeah, I'd get some butter and I would have been went back at it. Oh god, that sounds so gross. It does. Hey, did where's uh were you were you doing the alcohols with it? No, I wasn't drinking at all. Um I do think part of what probably made my tummy hurt is we were on a big bus and like get up to the casino is super curvy. So just like motion sickness probably didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? I don't. I've never experienced motion sickness, and I feel like everybody around me is having. I get it on buses and trains. I got. I have to really when we travel on the train. I have to get the little motion six wristbands. Adam, do you get that shit? What would you say, Chris? Does Does Adam get motion sickness or anything like that? No, no, he's fine. That's good. Um, I didn't have it until living in overseas and. Um, the well, stopping of the traffic made it really bad. I was gonna say that's because no one knew how to drive in Dubai. No one. Um, but my doctor said it's also because of like I can't clear my sinuses very well, so it makes me like my head all like discombobulated. Hmm. But like I don't. Okay. If we were driving, like if I was in the car with you and we're like driving and it's not stop and go, I would be fine. If it's stop and go, I'm like I'm gonna vomit. Um, or how if we're like going around driving? circles. Is it huh? different when you're driving? Uh, yeah, when I'm driving, it's fine. I, I was gonna say I can't ride in like the second row or the the like back row on like a SUV or anything anymore. Yeah, it just waves back and forth. Wow, that's crazy. I wonder what it seems like a epidemic that everybody's having issues with most motion sick. Maybe it's the microplastics. Probably. So that's because. See, we're spinning so fast already. If the world's not flat, that we should be fine with motion. The world's increased spinning. Yeah. And we're pear shaped, according to dumbass Neil deGrasse Tyson. Wait, the world is pear shaped? Yeah. You didn't hear him say that? Oh, you I haven't heard hear that, that either. What? No, no. I'm sorry. Oh, I got to find it. All right. Talk amongst yourself. I'm going to show you how dumb this fucking asshole is. Hold on one second. <laughs> Christopher, you cannot say that because people will come for us if we think Neil deGrasse Tyson is dumb. Yes. Yes. Don't don't, don't say those things. Um, While while our listeners, or while we're talking about gross things like me throwing up lobsters, earlier before we started recording, I actually shared with Angela, Christopher, I've been sharing all week, my boogers, uh, I've been sick. Oh, was that your other wacky world news? No. No, 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 no. That is not my other wacky world news. This is just (laughs) while Christopher is telling us about pear-shaped worlds. Speaking of things not pear shaped but flat, I literally blown the world's biggest boogers. Like, I think that la- that one was like almost what four or five. In- it was like the size of my palm. Came out of my nostrils, so the color of strawberry jam. She showed us a visual. It, it was something. So, if if our listeners are curious, I have pictures. We can post them. They probably would get next kicked off of instagram but uh and then adam was like you need to tell the doctor so because he was like like i, I think just, 
They were so big. Yeah. So I texted, I emailed the doctor because we're like close with her. And I was like, hey, Terry, like I've been sick still. Um, and I said, Adam thinks I should tell you, do you want me to show you pictures? And she's like, yeah, I'm always up for some pictures. So I sent her the pictures and she's like, those are some pretty big buggers. She's like, but I'm not worried. You just need a neti pot. You're fine. Which is crazy. I was about to say, did she tell you to get a neti pot? Well, I already have, we have like a neti like squeeze thing. And she's okay. like, yeah, that's the one you need to, yeah. That's what it is. And she's like, you're fine. But she was not, she said, I am not worried about this. You are okay. <laughs> Which is crazy. Did you find it, Chris? Or would you like us to move on to our next world, wacky world news? I got it. I'm on it. And it's pretty much at the beginning, so it won't take that long. So you want to find the farthest point from that center. And it turns out sea level at the equator is farther away from the center of the Earth than sea level near the poles. It has nothing to do with global warming and melting of the ice caps. Why is that? Because Earth... We know it spins once a day. Yes, thank you. Wow. People know the, how long a day last year. Good for row number two. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Uh, great start. So, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. Yeah. It gets wider in the middle. And So Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It's, an, it's oblate. And officially, it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby is a good way. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. So it turns out the pear-shapedness is it's bigger thick. than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. How much higher is the tall mountain that you would what? Friends, but which name I forget, and probably you do too, in... Peru, or is it Ecuador? Yeah, Ecuador. Ecuador. How much higher, if you were on top of this mountain in Ecuador, how much higher than the Mount Everest would you be? There's a 20,000 foot mountain in Ecuador, which is right, Ecuador is like near the equator, hence Ecuador. Oh, uh, you're, you're, you're uh, just not giving up. <laughs> and uh, huh. that mountain is actually, the summit of that mountain is one and a third miles higher away from Earth's center than the summit of Mount Everest. Okay, question number two. Wait, 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 but you got to know, let me just so you understand, we've been fed a lie our entire, I want to call it a lie. We've been fed- It's a point of view thing, I think. It is a lie, dumb fucker. Earth has been misrepresented to us by geologists because the globes that you buy, that you rub your fingers over- Earth is not flat, Chris. And you feel the Rocky Mountains. No, <laughs> no, okay? These mountains are puny compared to the size of the Amanda, mountains. he's talking about your boobs. If you were truly <laughs> that size, some big cosmic giant lumbering through sp- All right, now he's just talking about dumb shit. What? Okay. I don't know, rewind one second. I mean, wasn't he talking about dumb shit the entire oh. time because it's Ecuador? Yeah, he's and he couldn't remember that it's been- Equator adjacent? If you were a galactus-sized person and you looked at Mount Everest, you would barely even notice it because on comparison to the Earth, e- even Mount Everest is puny. It is so fucking tiny. Like, it's what, how, how many miles tall? What am I? Like five, a mountain? Five? Uh, the Marianas Trench is, is farther deep than Everest is tall. It, for for the entire sphere of the Earth, it it how do I put it? Even the biggest the peak and valley, Everest and Marianas Trench, it's like eleven miles difference between the circumference of the Earth, the circumference of the Earth, which is like thirty six thousand miles. At the highest point, Mount Everest is twenty nine thousand thirty one point seven feet. What's that in miles? Uh, five thousand two. No eight. Miles. 8,848.86 miles. Or that, no, that's meters. Oh, Never 90, mind. Uh, I, I don't know. No one would be able to scale it. Then. This is like 90,000 feet. So it's like, it's like give or take five miles. So the, the height of Everest, five miles, the, the bottom of the Marianas Trench, seven miles, about 12 miles difference. 
the whole outside shell of the earth is 36,000 miles. You're talking 11 on all that. You would, it would be so perfectly machined. If you were big enough to be Galactus, you would hold this ball and feel like a cue ball. It would be so, it would feel so perfectly round. It probably rivals some of the stuff that we yeah, have now. According to Neil, it's not round. It, yes. It, yeah, so it's it's a pair. Perfect sphere. That's what the yeah. earth is. He just state. said it was. But he's not saying it's a sphere. He's saying it's like a pear shape because of its spinning. It's gotten wider. So it could be getting flat. No, no, because at the equator, gravity is a little stronger. So that section right there is just ever so slightly different than the other section. But what he's saying so is you wouldn't se- notice it because you're, if you're so big, you wouldn't notice the extra. Sorry. No, uh, probably. I don't know. I don't know how, how, how big the, the, the curve is. But if you are a galactic sized person, maybe you notice. Well, no. Perfectly safe screen. Splitting hairs. Happy holidays, friends. Happy 420, holidays. baby. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. I don't know what it is, to be honest. I just think. I know you don't like Neil deGrasse Tyson, but I personally do. He it's just sounds awesome. like when he talks, he, like, he sounds like he doesn't even know what he's talking about. That's what I don't like about him. Adam's not a just like him. I think if you listen to someone talk long enough, they'll eventually say something that's nonsensical. But for the most part, he is a very well-spoken, articulate physicist and one of the minds of a generation. I was going to say that that's how Adam and I got married. Eventually, he just started making sense. What's your thought on uh, Bill Nye, the science guy? Uh, He's a better... uh, your head than he is an actual scientist. He's not even a scientist. He's an engineer. Uh, well, engineers engineers science. do a lot of science. He, he got an honorary degree. Like that's why that, kind of science. He's a better public figure than he is an actual scientist. He just more advocates for the science community as a whole, be, even though he's not on the science part of it. He's the PR part. Like a lot of like en- engineers have to do chemistry, physics, like they have to learn a ton of science part to be able to do engineering. Do you know what kind of engineer he is? I, I don't, to be honest. But my thing is, though, if I'm a car mechanic, I can't call myself an airplane mechanic just because I'm a car mechanic, right? Well, you've oh, already specified I mean, that you're a car mechanic if you say Oh, I'm sorry. I screwed that up. You're a mechanic. Yes, I'm sorry. I screwed that up. Thank you, Angela. But I think yeah, it's... Th- Get you can still say you're a mechanic and you probably go to get more certifications. Yeah. Like get an engineer, be a specific engineer. You could be a physics, a physics engineer. Like I, we have aerospace engineers. We have mechanical engineers, electrical engineers. We have metallurgical. Those are my favorites because I like that word metallurgical. So an engineering degree with one of those, it is a scientific consensus behind this, behind it as a topic. Those are your certifications for it. So if you're trying to just, uh, he's a mechanical just, engineer. Here, you have to have. He's one a mechanical of engineer. Yeah. The- okay, then he absolutely took physics and chemistry, yes. and he has, you have to. He had to learn about like, like mechanical engineer. It's a lot. Like I don't. I'm sure. I'm not downgrading that. But I work I'm- for those fuckers, and like the amount of math and science they have to know to be able to make these turbines and these like cryo pumps and stuff like i hated calculus that's why i never I know, like, this not, is why i would never be an engineer i'm too pretty for math i like math but not calculus calculus as a I, subject doesn't i'm fascinated me. By, like i took a couple engineering classes when i worked at mines and like what i was more fascinated about is like the tolerance aspect and um i love thermodynamic i think that is really fascinating but i couldn't do all of it you know what the hardest part about uh, perpetual motion devices? Whenever you see these, battery dies. Close, close. Uh, it's how, how do you hide the motor? Anytime you see one of those devices that's perpetual motion, mm-hmm. just know the hardest part about that video is them hiding the motor. Mm-hmm. Perpetual motion is impossible. All right. Well. Moving on. Here is my second story, which I can you can you enter in like a Walter White, uh, Jesse Pinkman, like yeah, Mister White, yes, yeah, science. <laughs> <laughs> I 
like being a guest on this the show. Editing. Or, or exactly. hold on, you can yeah. do that, or you can do How I Met Your Mother, where it's like lawyered. Looks yes. <laughs> 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 like you're making that, but you're like smoking your. I know. I thought thing. he was doing too. That's what I thought. <laughs> I mean, but he can't say he's sucking his thing. Yeah, that's awkward. Okay, our next story. I'm not sure if this is real or not, but I came across it, um, and it, I don't know. It just made me, uh, it made me chuckle from so many parts of my chuckle box. So, wife stands by sex oddball hubby. He shagged our Sunday dinner chicken, but I still love him. Oh my God, you did send that to me. I forgot about that one. Did what? <laughs> this might this be this like a national true. choir. It could maybe not be real. This is the onion, but like, but it was great. hysterical. Apparently, in the story, a husband shagged the Sunday chicken, but the wife still loves him. That's weird. I mean, I, I remember this because I said something like, is that the British equivalent of American Pie? So he did is that what he did? <laughs> I don't even get the like I don't, I don't, I don't I, I feel like you said the same thing. I said that's what before, the word but I was muted and I'm like, that's fine, you know me. I said this. I said, what's his name fucked a pie before? <laughs> oh, like <laughs> This isn't technically impossible to think. I just think of how painful it would be. I mean, there's bones in there, bud. I mean, and they're little bones. Um, what I appreciate is that some people's comments were, do you think he they still ate the chicken for dinner after he stuffed it? Huh. Yeah. Or for most wives, the sight of their beloved being deep, balls deep in a Sunday roast chicken usually sends them for the hills. So she walked in on him and like mid stroke. Yeah. Yeah. How okay. do you explain that source? And it's from 2017. This was from before these, this stuff wasn't even. Well, that she prefaced, animal, animal she prefaced, prefaced saying I prefaced very hard saying it's, it's from the Sunday sport, which is a rag paper. It's not always true, but I thought it was hysterical. I said, I didn't know the truth of it. Fake news. Even if it is real it news, is. It's yeah. not, look, it's on Reddit, your favorite thing. Oh, you love Reddit. Reddit. You think Reddit's the best. You play this. But you can, have it you can ask Christopher to add oh, it. Can you, can, you add, can you add in the Trump that you are fake news? Right <laughs> there. I got good sound bites that, that, that are applicable to what we're talking about. That is the thing we need to make a, a sound bite. We got good sound bites. Yeah, I clip that. That's... I right. have some. I have a soundboard. It's only got four things on it. I have. Add those. Do gotcha, bitch. Help. I can change them. I just I set it up for the Bigfoot thing, the the Bigfoot episode, but I didn't. Uh... Let's. Sh- Whatever you're going to do to reprogram them, it's just going to be Adam saying things. Mm-hmm. Nerd. Love it. So, I mean, so back to the, it was it was a turkey, right? It wasn't a chicken. Or was it a chicken? No, it was a chicken. Okay. <laughs> so she- Another comment online says, I bet the base didn't taste right. <laughs> so I uh, did he finish? I need to know. This oh. is, this is- <laughs> I mean... It doesn't shine. It was probably extra salty. That that base was extra salty. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think how like what part would you go in on it at? Would you like make a cut in the turkey or would you like do it in I mean, like, where the neck turkey. comes? It's not out? a turkey, it's a chicken. I mean, yeah, well it's the same principle, right? I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Split roast cake. Okay, so it says that Glenda Baker found her husband, Alan, thrusting his manhood into a chilled poultry. Oh, and the cold? Wait, it wasn't his- even warm? <laughs> Look, buddy. She signaled wife- her displeasure in robust terms. They never thought of dissolving their union. She probably said, she probably walked in, dropped whatever's in her hand, and said, 
You nasty motherfucker. It said, alerted by ecstatic yelps and alarmed to find Alan absent from their bed last weekend, Glinda crept downstairs to the kitchen of their something home in Cheshire. The site that greeted the 47-year-old playground supervisor will stay with her for the rest of her days. She said, Al- should I do it in a British accent? Sure. Yes. Alan was Alan was stood next to the, I can't really do a good British accent when I'm eating pizza. Alan was stood next to the table with his pajama bottoms around his feet. The chicken was on the table and he was doing the sex to it. <laughs> I said, oh, doing the sex. <laughs> and he spun around and in a look of horror to his face. I said, get your dick out of that chicken this instant. That's for Sunday dinner. To make okay, sure so he knew I was this sounds like fake news. This is amazing. To make sure he knew I was cross, I twatted him with a spoon. I was furious on the amount of bothered on the account my brother and his in his Zoom. wife might be coming around for Sunday dinner. Heaven knows what she'd say if she found out that she was eating chicken that Alan had just shagged. So to say the bird went into the trash and we had pork chop for dinner. <laughs> so if, must not be putting out. <laughs> it's amazing. So if she didn't walk in on him, do you think she would have still made the chicken? Yeah, and so served it? She didn't know that he was doing well, I don't know, because what do you think he would have like also that begs the question, how many times and what other food has he done this yeah. to that she was not aware of? Well, isn't that like back in the day you would make a ba- uh, a pipe out of an apple and then you eat the apple as the evidence? Isn't this the yeah, same? that's to I think that's acceptable. No. Whereas no. No. Chicken. Different. That, that's this guy's reasoning. This is is it though? Literally, it seems like it. Cubic hairs in my Sunday dinner versus eating wee ba- weed apple. So there's the. Uh, how do you think his thought process went down? Or you think this is something he was planning? You think it was spontaneous or he was planning to fuck that chicken? <laughs> that chicken looked real good to him. It what? It wasn't cooked. That it was cold. Cooked her. That is not a cooked chicken. If you think that's the cooked chicken, I'm gonna need you to really oh, get your yeah. glasses back. Yeah. No. And I was gonna say, please please <laughs> cut Adam off right now. Or at least don't let him eat anything because they might eat raw chicken. He's supposed to be the chef out of the two of them. <laughs> Makes me worried about the chickens we have in the freezer. I'm under the influence. So I said, you're cut <laughs> off. Look, I, I think it has to be premeditated. I'm not a man. I don't have a, a penis. But I don't think you all are like, you know what would be really good right now? A tight chicken around my dick. But I think it's equivalent for a woman. I don't think there's much difference there because a woman could look at a banana or a cucumber and say, right. hmm, I'd like that jammed up my, you know what? <laughs> so I think I it goes both like, ways. Yeah. That's that's a good point, Chris. And I don't think, I think that I, I mean, I have heard stories like about why they I mean, I'm not physically visit. attracted to any sort of vegetable or fruit like that. No, I don't look at it and go, no. That's a nice size cucumber. Yeah, that, give it that, that feels implant. like. I think it goes down to. I wonder what that feels like. You know, I, I think that was what his thought process was too. I'm like, hmm, that's a cold turkey or a chicken. I wonder what it feel like. But that's the thing is that it's cold too. That's what throws me off is that the fact that it's cold. Guys, too. It's I mean, it's Adam said it's fake. He it to be. does not believe this is true. I, I mean, yeah, it might be. Could you what see you the picture of them now? Uh, Amanda, this just screams fake news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Fuck, Amanda. <laughs> I said, Ned, they, they didn't get to see it before you... No, and I feel like I... Don't you cite, cite your sources. Isn't this literally what you're having a party uh, about? No, for, for, first say? off, she sent this to me on Instagram, so we didn't pack check this. 
we were just dumbfounded by the topic. Listeners, I feel like I said multiple times when we started this. You did. If this was real or not. But it made me chuckle. And you all can go fuck a chicken. Nikita <laughs> <laughs> bag of chicken Richards. About fucking a chicken? Yeah, we're the we're the guy wanted people to uh, officer Barbara to learn how to read. And he 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 left all the stuff to te- to teach him how to read and you know essentially fucked a chicken. Uh, what? It was like the first season. How literally, does it go literally from- the first season of South Park, like the third episode? How does it go from someone learning to read to fucking a chicken? No, no, no. For him to figure out who it was, he had to learn how to read. So Officer Barbrady was a literate. For him to figure out who fucked the chicken, yes. was the chicken alive or dead? The guy was like the librarian or something, and he wanted him to learn how to read. Was the chicken alive? He had to get into the mind of the chicken fucker. How do you fuck an alive chicken? It's South Park. Don't ask questions. This was like early days of South Park. It made no sense. You know this. No, no, no. My brain goes to like pop culture references. On how one would have sex with the chicken. Yeah, because you probably fucking kill the chicken. Also, the chicken claws. Like, that seems awful. Seems dangerous. Yeah. All right. All right, moving on. All right. So. (laughs) <laughs> Off the chicken fucking topic here. Uh, so, so what I thought we would do for this episode is go through our past episodes to kind of wrap everything up and to tie up any loose ends or thoughts that we have on the uh, past two seasons. Some of them we did quite some time ago, and some of the ones towards the end will be some topics we may have just covered, but I figure we'd go through them and talk about them and uh, see what we get. Uh, the first episode, it's our, our season one, episode one episode, my topic and simulation theory. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys think we're in a simulation or are you guys? Oh, going? my God. We're doing both seasons. I oh, thought yeah. you said insemination theory. And I was like, I don't remember that episode. It's called Inception. <laughs> yes, we are in a simulation. In, in I think. I, 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 I was truly- so long ago. It was. It was, and some of these Angela, th- these are ones that these are like before, before me. Yeah, yeah. that's why I figured it'd be day. fun to go through them because you didn't get a chance to. I know. To really, I, that was in. one I listened. I was to gonna say all Amanda. Amanda, Amanda got my sidebar topics about that's things cool. during these early episodes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we're in a simulation. Everything it makes sense. It's like oh, yeah. well, the, the the Matrix is real. The hardest Only one for once me you observe is observe the... something. Can you measure it? It, it, it screams a, a, a computer that like only renders in what it needs to until it's seen. So like someone sees this electron, they're like, oh, okay, someone wants to look this level. We don't have the processing power to do that. We're just gonna, you know, show that one little thing. You, you have a clean now. You can hear me. Yeah. I feel like it is probably one of the conspiracy theories I believe the most. Um, mainly the Mandela effect. Is something that yes. that one is, I think, what makes me be like, yeah. Like, I remember, like, sex in, in the city and sex and the city. Like, I swear it was in. And in. And it's actually and, I think. Actually yes, and. It's always been. No, it's in. It was sex in the city, not sex and the city. I swear. And then the I remember that one, way. one. And then. Yeah. The other one that I was like, I can't remember. I mean, there's yeah, a bunch of them. That's why. I, the other thing is, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called the missing 411. Mm-mm. So it, it's a topic all on its own, and I'd love to go through it, but it, it really deserves like a deep dive. So there's a guy named David Pilatus, Pilatus, I believe, and he's a, he's a former police officer. And I can't remember exactly how he got started in it, but more or less, he was, I don't know if he was assisting with a case, a missing person's case, or something that he got tied into a missing person's case. And he went to the National Forestry Service in one of the states. Well, I'm sorry, it's a national, so it's statewide, but he, the one he went to was in a specific state. And he asked for their total missing people for that area right mm-hmm. and like any police department or any they, they'd be able to produce that and and anybody can get it it's public information and same with that 
but they don't track it. The National Forestry Service does not track how many people go missing in their forest. So he went in and kind of started investigating himself, and he found out that like a shit ton of people go missing in, in national forests. And like oh. it's it's weird cases like somebody like a kid all he's behind you one second, you turn around and he's gone and literally like no trait. And what I think it is, well, one of the things it is, unless you figure in Bigfoot, aliens, and all that fun stuff, is it's the simulation effect. There's not enough rendering to render that part of the forest to where you that person ends up. So instead of trying to render it and screwing up the system, they just remove the person. You know, to free up like RAM space. They're kind of like, oh, we're just gonna like this person's gone because yeah. you don't have RAM for it. Yeah, we can't like render what they're, you know, it's not meant for people to see or it's not, you know, we can't render what they're trying to view. So we just take them out of the equation. And I think that's why National Forest. Yeah. At the end where it's like everything's already hidden. It's overlapped on everything. Yeah. Or like when you get to that part in a video game and you can't go past that boundary. Yes. Yeah. Uh Instead of it, you can't go past the boundary. It just removes you. And I'm not doing that topic justice, to be honest. I mean, it is super fascinating. And there's a couple, um, there's two documentaries that he's put out. One is just called Missing 411. And the other one is Missing 411 Hunted. And the hunted one is all about people that were out hunting and it's happened to them. And it is like super, super fascinating. It's all about missing people. And that's it, it's, really interesting. It is. It's a really, he's done a ton of podcasts and stuff. And the guy is like super legit. Like, I don't know. He, he seems like, you know, and he never goes in and says like, Oh, it's aliens. Oh, it's Bigfoot. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. He just, he just says there's something strange about these cases that, you know, he doesn't like have a specific theory of what it is that's causing it. He just knows there's something going on that's causing this because these cases are, are just weird how these people are going missing, you know? Would you say there's something strange in the neighborhood? Oh, sure. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Can I say it or would that be copyright issue? Oh, they might ding us on that. But we're not. Uh, unfortunately, we're not We're not quite at enough listeners. There's to, something to not call. normal in the cul-de-sac. Who are you going to call? Goyle the Busters. Waters. <laughs> Ghost facers. <laughs> oh wait, that's copyrighted too. School <laughs> busters. Man, it didn't get far enough in the in the show to get that. I know. Uh, no, man, I gave up, y'all. Like, I tried so hard to watch Supernatural, but after like season three and a half, I was like, "Mom, I can't do this anymore." There's something I saw that was Supernatural related. Yes, but look, didn't I don't. Well, All right. Well, there we yeah, are with that. What about uh, animal spies? We know that's kind of legit. You know that's a thing. But what are your guys' feelings on that? Any fun what? stuff or new information? Spies. Best oh, yeah. episode we had. They found a dolphin with like a, tr- a tracking camera back in the 80s. Yeah, do you know where you learned that about? On the podcast episode two that we had? <laughs> but I'm <bummed. laughs> All right, all right. Me, Angela, I listen. Any, uh, I listen. Any thoughts on that, Angela? Uh, it was before me. I it's been so long since I listened to it. Ah, uh, but wasn't that like our number one episode at one point for <laughs> listeners? Uh, actually, I hate. Break or it, did it get overrun from I, season it one? It was the number. It was the number two episode. The number one has always been simulation. I think it's still it. Because it's good. It's, it's such a perfect explanation. Um, I haven't checked it in a while, to be honest. But yeah, it was. Uh, it what? No, but it was like our number two, I think, for for a good while. I thought it was number one for a while, and then the simulation. I don't know. We I, I'd have to listen to because I know in some of the episodes we recap saying, "Oh, this was our number one." Oh well, maybe it was. I, I may be wrong. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have it in my notes, though, because I didn't post date on my notes. But yeah. 
yeah, so that's that. And all right, next one's the good old alien encounters. What are we part one and about? two? Yeah. Oh, that a two we... part? Yeah. Think there's aliens? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Think they're d- abducting people? Yeah, of course. What do you think? I definitely think there's alien. Oh, abducting, I think, is going on, but I think a lot of it is holy shit. Hold that thought. Uh, well, I'm going to hold this thought and jump back to it. Um, Sorry about that. So I definitely think there's aliens. I think a lot of this stuff is not necessarily, I don't think all of it is interdimensional extra extra trash i don't really and i don't see that's the thing with aliens too is i don't completely think that they're from another planet you know i think it's more likely is that the right way lizard people no well yeah centers i think that yeah that's a very good possibility or the other one is that they're interdimensional they come from a different dimension instead of a different planet. So timeline, kind of yeah. Encounters, I mean, yeah, like interdimensional, like uh, another uh, universe. I guess is the way to say it. But Lost I, world. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I think there's something going on there, and I don't. I, I'd love to know what it is, and I think we're going to find out about it. I just. All right. um, what? Chris had a sidebar. I think he looked up our recordings to see what was yes. number one and stuff. Yeah. So since we're we just wrapped up the first three episodes, I'm gonna run through that and give you the top uh five episodes of all time as of this moment. So our number one episode is actually episode ten, Hollow Earth. Interesting. Yeah, our number two is simulation theory, and then number four is witches. That makes sense. Witches. Number five is did we land on the moon? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. We had Hollow Earth simulation. Witches. That was three. I thought you said that was four. No, witches is four. I mean, sorry, that witches was... is three. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm thank you. <laughs> and number four. Is did we land on the moon? And then number five is the Yatlov Pass incident. I don't remember that one at all. Oh, yeah, that was the Russian one. That was hilarious. I did that their Russian voices and names. Yeah, it was episode. Oh, six. it was that episode? Yeah. 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 So yeah. our. All our top five are from the first season. I think at least maybe I was wrong. No, I agree. I'm sorry. I was counting and I do agree. It was a good season. I think um, we changed some things up a little bit for the better. And I think we kind of, we were, we were more consistent than yeah. unfortunately we, well, I can't even say that, but I think we were a little more consistent. We've had some good runs where we were really consistent. And I think we, um, that that law there kind of messed us up a little bit between uh, episode one or season one and up in season two. But I definitely think we have a much solid show now. You I know, mean, as far as releasing for season one, it was, it was at spotty. least two a month. No, it was at least two a month. Oh, was it? Yeah. Like it, it wasn't until witches that it was. At, and then so witches was August. <laughs> the first part of Betty and Barney was in September and then the second part of that didn't get released until November, but November was still too as far as you, uh, you posting and stuff. So, I mean, was, it was pretty consistent. You were doing our, like every other week. Our top season two episode is Operation High Jump and that's not till number 10. That's mm. our 10th. That, that was episode. the one uh hold on it was um one of my my topics 
the Antarctica thing. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I love that one. Yes, yes, yes. I yeah, I thought that was a good one. I thought that was a really great to- topic with Admiral Bur- Admiral Bird, his yeah. diary. The one with the gay frogs. That was the gay frogs. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I love the gay frogs. I liked our wacky world news for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Mountain Dew one, Amanda. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, there's two. There's the Mountain Dew one, and then the two guys in Arkansas shooting each other with the bulletproof vests. Yes, yes. And getting tried for it. Love that. All right. So, our number... Six... Sixth episode, RM... Plenty of holes in the RM thinking... Plenty oh, of holes yeah, that in the sinking the, of RMS Titanic. If it was real or not, yeah. That was a good one, too. That was good. Yes, I, I like that story, and I have a nephew that is fascinated with the Titanic, and he is very, he knows that he's, he's young, he's only nine, and he knows a shitload about everything about the Titanic. And um, when he gets older, hopefully he can listen to our show, because it's got potty, potty mouth in it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was that was a really good topic. I don't think I have five Bigfoot. Do we believe in Bigfoot? Yeah, of course. We saw them in Colorado. Who saw them? The news people. What? Yeah, I feel like you talked about that on that episode. No, it was another one because it happened. No. Late. We talked. You all were we here. talked about it on one of them. Yeah. So it, it exists, like legit. They haven't and said he's that. real. He's real. I believe he's real, but they, that's another one. I think that's interdim, interdimensional. I don't know if he's like. I'm on the fence of whether he's like a. It's like a an animal or being. That we haven't discovered yet. I don't know. Where right. I sit with that completely, but. I kind of lean that he's interdimensional, and that's why we're like not able to see him. We kept glim- catch glimpses of him, and he sometimes he or she leaves a mark, or we catch him on video. But I don't know. I'm on the fence because how 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 else would they be able to be, you know, good such good hiders, you know, if they weren't able to have like a special ability or uh, technology te- technological capabilities? I mean. Yeah, the whole thing, like, oh, well, how come we don't, if they're real, how come we don't have a skeleton of one that's died? You know, it could be that they bury their own. You know, they could bury their own. And then how or many they're, bear- ha- they're hopping in their interdimensional transportation mode is like through a tree or something. Yeah. Yeah. It could be something cool like that. And I mean, there's, there's these random stairs. Another thing fun about the National Forest, we could do a whole episode on just the National Forest. But another interesting thing, is in a national forest, there's like these random staircases that people find in national forests. Have you guys heard about that? It looks like a piece yeah. of a house. It's like it's like all random. the wood ones. Yeah, well, they're wood, they're concrete. I mean, it's it's crazy. The, the random staircases in the woods. And they're just like they're they're like go nowhere. Yeah, I'll share my screen. Nowhere that you know of, but maybe we can't see it because we don't have special Bigfoot eyes. Yeah, it's, that's what I he's saying. Know. They're like interdimensional. I mean, look at these things. They're like just where do they oh, go? Oh God, they go up. Yeah, but where? Like to where? What is that in the woods for? And they're all different kinds of stairs. Like, why would somebody build that? Oh, I, mean, I love the stone these, ones. It's great. I mean, yeah, these are neat. They probably could have been an old structure, but it's still strange, like randomly just a staircase in the middle of the woods. Like this. What what is that? I, I mean, just, that could also just be like, couldn't that be stairs that were there and then like ended up like it didn't go anywhere? Like people just like, oh, I was gonna build stairs and then ended up not doing it. Or the place that it was going ended up okay, that's not real. What? This the one with the like the like medieval looking one. This one? Yeah. Yes, it is. No, not that one. Sorry, I meant the one above it. 
This? Over. It's the same one. Oh, go down. The one that has an arrow. Oh. Why didn't you just say that one? Because I don't oh, yeah, know. That's not, that's not real. Yeah. For sure. But I, and I don't, like some of these are, I'm just, I just Googled random staircases in the weird, in the weird, in the woods. Let me see if I do this. Why not just do stairs to nowhere in the woods? Probably a smart way to do it. I'm just coming up. Yeah, like some of these, I think, are, they used to be like probably connected to stuff that has been washed away or like, like, you know. But the cement ones that right one there the with the kids. That one's the one that's like the most weird. Yeah. But, like who would, why would somebody build that? That's, that one's weird. That photo looks super photoshopped. Yeah, okay. it does. And some of the, like the, the ones that more interest me or like what the hell's going on are maybe these ones that look like they were part of like a castle or something. Yeah. Or these that are like just random stairs going up to a like tree. They're going to go up to go hunting. I mean, where that, are they going to go? That, they use their like little tree climber things. I mean, they do have trees tree stands that have stairs up to them but that it that's like out of somebody's house yeah i don't but know yeah, that, it, things like that are just they they're fascinating i mean some of these just like somebody built stairs on a hike trail so i don't really buy that there but, but yeah like that yeah some of them are pretty questionable like there's a bunch of good like stories from like national forest officers and stuff uh, Talking about these stairs, and that one of the guys was saying that they were told he was told when he, you know, first became a ranger to not go up the stairs, but nobody would really tell him why. Oh, yeah, it's like weird. There's weird, a lot of weird stuff. Um, you Google like, is there stairs in Colorado? Yeah, okay, ran, what like random stairs, stairs, stairs in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I just see your pretty face with your very nice black glasses. I have a bit of a red undertone. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't seem like there is. It just pulls up the same. Um, just shows the same, like the same. Shit. So it doesn't call out any specific ones in Colorado. Yeah. That's questionable. And it, I mean, it deserves a. a I mean, people have done a shitload of videos on YouTube and stuff. What are the famous stairs in Colorado? Oh, the Manitou Incline. Uh huh. F that noise. Never it's doing that. Historical. It is historical. But yeah, I mean, that's another thing that's like really strange of you know stuff in the national forest and stuff that. I don't know. I guess the stairs I think are questionable because like. I think we have to remember that like we weren't the first ones to live here. And so I think that, you know, in some places natives could have built stairs to get to like certain things that then were like torn down or removed if they move. Um, I think the ones where it's like iron and like metal, that's the more questionable ones. But like the ones that are wood or stone could absolutely have been built like thousands of years ago. And see that that's the other thing too. So, is that, but with oh, the wood, ahead. they would have fell apart by now. Like exactly, it would have rotted away. And it goes into another topic that I like: the conspiracy is uh, Tataria, and that's a that's a bad explanation of what the topic's about because Tataria was a real place in the Russia region, but it's talking about that there was like an advanced civilization that lived here in this in our world before us. Oh, I love it, that. Yeah, and it and it like that was there's like a that's still on our list to do. Yeah, it is, and we're gonna do it. It's just it's a it's a vast topic, and I that's another one that I'm like terrified to take on because I don't want to like screw it up because it is a really good subject, and I I think I could sell it. I just need to really work on it, but that's a good one. And wasn't really you that sent me the video of the woman who was like? saying she was from 
galactic people. No? Okay, I don't know who it was then. But she was like, like a woman who's like, I am human, but I'm galactic. And like, I, I'm pregnant with a human baby, but I had to tell my galactic family. This doesn't ring any bells. Oh my gosh. Maybe it was Eric Cousin. I was like, I'm sorry, come again? That's fascinating. <laughs> I'd love to hear that story. Um, it, I will find it because it was so entertaining. The the two people that do that topic justice are a guy that his name's John Levi. And he does topics on YouTube, but his talking is so dry. But I, I like it. it. It's soothing to me. Let me see if I can pull up a video and give you guys a snippet real quick to uh, hear it. But he's he's very dry, his talking. Robin can't stand it, but um, to me, it's soothing. But he's extremely knowledgeable about the topic. And uh, the other one is um, My Lunch Break, I think it's called. What's it called? And that that's another really good. Oh, okay, I found it. I will share it with you both. What is it? Who did you share it with? I'm gonna share an email on text message. Now, who did you share it with originally? Uh, no, and I think I just it just popped up. <laughs> so I was wrong. All right. So here, quick. So here's this guy's channel. Uh, I'll play a video second but his stuff is extremely dry like his voice not playing a second but he goes through like ancient tech videos like talks about ancient technology that was built in buildings talks about free energy and they're short so they're, they're usually they're typically under under 30 minutes in this water and somehow these have just been shredded the whole landmass shredded and here's a good example of something just not seeming so natural. The violin and his voice. He could put me to sleep in it. That I was going to say, that's what I'm going to listen to when I can't fall asleep now. Yes, it's good, yeah. though. I'm telling you, it's fascinating. But yes, it's very dry. And that's how most, not the, necessarily with the, pian- the violins and stuff, but a lot of his videos are. Very like, I guess monotone would be the best best example or the explanation. It is. It's very monotone and it's very. And this is. Yeah. He and like he goes hello. through. My lunch break. No, my lunch break. So he's the other good one, and his videos, it, they're a little more upbeat, but he goes through that topic as well, like ancient. Um, stuff and a lot of them they go through Wikipedia, uh, Google Maps. Like John Le- 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 Levi either goes on Google Maps or he goes out to the places in Utah and like picks it apart and ex- you know explains like pictures of buildings. They'll go through like these old pictures of buildings because they'll say that these buildings got built like in two years. Some of these like immaculate structures like this one right here oh i can't hover over it it's above where my cursor is right here they'll say like something as immaculate as that was built two years like how could we build that in two years in 1800 you know shit like that it just doesn't make sense make sense so but anyway fascinating topic that we will cover hopefully in the in the near future moving on That was the dial to love pass one. Was episode oh, six? Yes, episode six. So the up love pass. Wait, did so we that... ever talk about that? No, he just said that was our number five for the top yeah. five. Uh... So I don't think there's much new on that. I, I still kind of up in the air what happened with that. If the Harder. Russian government had something to do with it, or if it was, I don't know if it's necessarily extraterrestrial related. But I definitely think there was some kind of involvement and somebody in some position knows uh, what's going on with that. Anybody else have anything for that? Um, I think it was murder by the Russian government. 
Yeah, I could definitely see that the Russian government had something to do with it, for sure. I don't know what exactly they had to do with it, but I agree with you, Mana, that they definitely had something, had, did have something to do with it. The guy, the, the, um, I can't remember his name right now, that came on the trip with them last minute. He wasn't a part of the original group, but he, he added himself to it like as they were getting ready to leave, I think it was. Oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, that guy, I think he is a big part of, you know, whatever happened to them. Well, Flat Earth is our episode seven, and I think we already talked about that one. So I think we'll uh, get past that and go to, did we land on the moon? Do you guys think we landed on the moon? We did. Yep. hundred percent. I don't buy it. The Chinese sent a satellite up there like. Eight years ago, and they they even <laughs> that we planned. Like, I don't buy it. It was a good topic, Adam, but I don't buy it. Very good topic. Um, I don't think that. I just think the reasonings. I think that are one when NASA was asked if we how come we don't go back to the moon, their answering is we destroyed the technology. That but is we legit. Died, haven't we? No. I was gonna say they stopped the Apollo. The program. Yeah. It's a little- so do you do you just not believe that overall we landed on the moon or just the original moon landing in the 60s? I, I think the, the original moon landing mainly. And the other thing is okay. there's the original footage from the moon landing. There's only recordings of the recordings. There's the original footage does not exist it was destroyed here's my thought and take with it what you want but i think not only have we been to the moon but we have also continually been back to the moon and we have a uh, secret base a secret base in the moon yes and that's the other side i lean if i don't lean that the one way that is absolutely 110 percent the other direction i lean yep that is my belief. I will stick to it forever and ever. Amen. Um, I definitely think we saw something when we went up there. You know, if we did go up there and, you know, that may have been reason why we didn't go back. But um, there, there's other things that for that that I don't buy that we went to it. But I absolutely agree that if we did, that we encountered something for sure. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, next one. Apollo or sorry. Uh, da Vinci Code and with your spirit. <laughs> uh, that was just a fun one. I liked that. That was, uh, to me, I just thought it was really fun. Um, I don't know, like, if I believe, if I just, I don't believe. It just was a good time. It was a good time. It was a good topic. So we've had a few of those that it wasn't necessarily like, do you believe, do you not believe, Hunter? Like, totally. It's like, these are the facts. And I, I like those. I think they're, informative and and fun for sure yeah i think it allowed us to like just talk about the um the church and just like the history and i think it was like a nice yeah. fun history aspect yeah it's kind of like the, the 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 cornerstones of of the original idea of the podcast is the to definitely go down the cons- conspiracy rabbit hole but also just have a a fun topic that we can offer banter back and forth with exactly Um, Hollow Earth episode 10. So, my tidbit on that is if if the earth's not flat, tongue in cheek, uh, I definitely could see that it is hollow for sure. I think that there is some type, I don't know if I would say hollow egg, oh, like <laughs> hollow <laughs> earth, but I think you know, okay, I don't think it's like, um. What was that thing? Uh, um, like King Kong, but like on a level of King Kong. So yeah, going I, back to what Chris was saying with the interdimensional. Yeah. Yeah. Or lost world type thing in the middle of the earth. The world, yeah. yeah. I think the some of the they had some of the ideas on point for the King Kong 
and Godzilla thing, but I think the whole like inversion thing where they like when they were traveling from this side of Earth, the other side of Earth was kind of a little far fetched. There was a few things that were a little far fetched for me to buy completely, but I could definitely, um, you know, see that they were on the right path. For sure. mm-hmm. What do you think, Angela? Is Earth hollow? Uh, I mean, I think I'm of the mind of your thought with the interdimensional lost world type thing. I feel like there's something there. All right. Secret society. Mm. I think that was another fun one that you guys did early on. Oh, yeah. That was, and that was also another fun one. Like it was yeah, I mean, fun. we know they exist. I mean, it's, 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 it's in yeah. our face they exist i mean it's yeah, some of them are more in your face than others yeah but i definitely think that uh was the that thing. the one with um the place that all the big wigs go bohemian grove i mean there's yeah. a couple of those yeah with the uh, oh god what that actually what's the main what, one the illuminati yeah, Illuminati. Mm-hmm. Um, R- Rosicrucians. I think, um, like, some are more in your face than others, like I said, but I definitely think uh, there's some out there. I mean, people think the Order of Skull and Bones, like, that's a big secret society, which a large chunk of our presidents were a member of that. So I have to admit that. Right. Um, so that's kind of interesting. But that's because it's a big time uh, uh, fraternity, I guess, is the best explanation from, I think it's Yale. Is it Yale that Colin Bones is from? Oh, Harvard. Well, I think Yale uh, has two, but Harvard also. Yeah. I think Yale was the main one. But anyway, yeah, I think that, I think that might have a big chunk to do with it. It's because of that. Um, yeah. But yeah. This is, this is another fun topic. I like this one too. Is uh, New Orleans vampires? Oh, I love that. Um, that yeah, was such a good one. That was probably one of my favorites. Yeah. Where, where are you guys at with that? You think that there's vampires in New Orleans? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, and I like that. I've been really thinking a lot about like emotional vampires. I, I think, think talked about that. Yeah, and th- that's like the good example is that. What is that show called? That that guy's what vampire. we do in the shadows. <laughs> yeah. I love that show. Yeah, I love it's that so show. good. What? Oh God, what's his name? Colin. Colin, Colin. Robinson. Colin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, and and that's that's like a good example of it. I think that you know, I think that could be actually a thing, but I don't, I don't know how that would work physically. But I definitely, I think, think like I've met good. people who are emotional vampires, and I think oh, I, yeah. Four. What is what? Chris and I were on a vampire tour. Mm. Once when you went to New Orleans? Yeah, and they were talking about it. I mean, I could see it. Like, if you were a super, super introvert and you're with the complete opposite extrovert type that, you know, you're just both on either side, far ends of both of that. You're talking about it. (laughs) <laughs> it's definitely you have like yeah it, it definitely sucks some life out of you trying to be people but I think it's more than that like sometimes I think it's emotional vampires are also people who like have, live on the drama type thing too yeah and they like yeah. want it to be how do I say this like they know that like certain people have like I have high empathy like it's just part of my neurons and I think like I probably would be great uh great juice for the emotional vampire (laughs) because they could drain on the emotion that I already like have or maybe I am an emotional vampire because I respond to other people's emotions differently I don't know Uh I mean I'm a real vampire but (laughs) Uh, all right uh this one has me listed as doing this topic but i think it was our uh dear departed 
David. Was it David? Yeah, Aww. Eastern State Penitentiary. That oh, was David. Oh, um, R.I.P. Let me fix that. I mean, he's not dead, but like I was gonna say, yeah, he's still with <laughs> us. But he's, he's not... the podcast. Just kidding. Yeah. Oh gosh, he's departed the podcast. Chris is gonna still... see him tomorrow, so we'll find out if he's still alive. Uh, but that that was good. That was good. Good history lesson and dive into that paranormal side of Eastern State. That was definitely a good one. Didn't it, didn't Erica go to that with the girls? I, no idea. I feel like she did, or I don't. I don't know. They were near it or something. I don't remember anymore. All right, next one, episode fourteen, which. Uh, I think also another, another fun one. one. Yeah, I think that was a fun history one. Um, I I think there's, I think there's still witches that are like legit, and still here. Whether it's to the level Hollywood and TV makes it to where mm-hmm. they're brewing stuff and casting spells, but I definitely think there's a a type of witch that, that is legit thing. Well, oh yeah, I mean, I think I may have said this in the episode. But the idea of how witches, which is like what Hollywood puts out, is not what witchcraft is. Witchcraft was women using the nature in their senses to be able to heal and care for people. And also women learning. And because, of, oh my God, a woman could read. She's a witch. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I think that caused a lot of the uh, witch trials and things is that. I guess fear mongering. Yeah, I have, like um, now decided I'm in my witch era. Like, I don't know what that means, but just know that I'm in my witch era. era. I mean, technically, you are with your PhD, right? Yeah, right. I'm gonna like join groups of women. I'm gonna celebrate them. I might go pick up some berries and feed them to Adam. We'll see what happens. A good experiment. Not that recorded, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she didn't say what kind. I know. Just She's going to feed you some magic mushrooms. The sad for what berries. I'm actually taken off this earth by her. <laughs> Getting closer and closer every day. All right. Betty and Barney Hill abduction. That is episode. Love 15. it. That was a two parter. And that was the first one I think I was a one. Yeah. Was it really? Uh, that one was mm-hmm. so interesting, too, because. I really felt like the storyline in the just there's so many still questions I have and it happened so many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean it's still unfolding. It it was it was the one of the the first time anybody came forward and said they were um abducted in the mainstream like that. And I mean there was reports of it, but it didn't hit the mainstream like it did. Right. And it it was, I think, the first true description of what the the of what we call the Greys now. Um, so that's pretty interesting. And then just how that. jarring they were with it, like how like upset and like oh my gosh, it just felt so real to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and like I said, and, and for them to during that time to shine light on themselves like they did took a lot of courage in itself i mean they had to be spotlight hungry people to endure the shit for lack of better words they went through for being a multiracial couple in the 60s and and you know, shining light on that and it's just uh that that's another thing that i buy it is like if if it's not real why would they put themselves through that you know yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's just a crazy, like it was just very crazy and also quite like entertaining. So yes. good episode. Yeah. All right. Yep. Next one. Queen Lizzie and her lizard people. Oh, all right. Amanda's favorite topic. Oh my gosh, I was listening to a podcast more about this and like lizard people. And um, I don't know, man, like it's just so crazy to me so crazy i just can't like the more and more people talk about the more ridiculous it sounds so 
that's just that's how I feel. It is. It is very kind of out there. It's out there for one of the, for the podcast pod, for the um, conspiracy theories that I see. Hold on one second. Yeah, it, that's what that's the thing. It just seems so off for like what we know, but I don't know. Maybe I think the like thought about it being about like aliens coming and then like like the tall grays like that doesn't seem as off like the aspect of like lizards i think is weird but the fact that maybe we are like descendants from well it's weird because we know we're descendants from apes because just genetics but could there be some type of mixture with the like other creatures, I can't remember what they're called, like the large, the tall aliens. That doesn't seem unplausible to me. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about the tall white? Tall whites, yeah. Yeah, I definitely um, think that. Thing. I think we might have our numbering screwed up. Poor Kay. Oh, yeah. That was like my birthday when we did that. And you weren't on that one, Ange. I think you re- it's not it's right with the way you released it. Is it? Yeah. Pretty sure. Okay. I don't know any better. Okay. okay, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that number or something like that. For some reason the flat earth is uploaded twice. I gotta fix that. Mind that's, that's weird. Anyway, moving on. Uh, oh, oh, you know what's missing? We did we talk about this one? What? Oh no, we did. Never mind. Nothing. Nothing. Cut that part out. Continue. Uh, Episode seventeen. Is... Oh yeah. Episode seventeen. Fox. Fox. Yes. Yes. Love a uh, cult. We did two cult episodes. Fucking love them. Um. Can't wait to start my own. Thinking about it might be centered around any hot dogs. I'm sure. <laughs> I think that was a good one. I, I like the that first one that we did because it was just like a high level, and then the most recent one we did with uh, your Trump episode, the cult of Trump episode, Amanda. I know, but then it was a good like, tie in together. Amazing. Uh, I love when someone trolls me. Please, listener, <laughs> if you really want to engage personally with A. Davis, just troll me because I think it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that guy was definitely not happy with us, wasn't he? I want to. I mean, for, for our listeners who don't know, we are considering going into the world of YouTube and, and recording ourselves and posting it out there, which I don't know if you, we're, we definitely have the face for radio. So I'm yeah, sure I did good. at least. But um we had a uh, we had some some friends who wanted to tell us how bad our audio was. I think he said it was the worst audio he had ever heard ever. Yeah. Which I don't know, kind of a compliment. Thanks, Boo Boo. Yeah, and somehow he was weird. He like compared it to Joe Rogan in a weird way. Also taken back, I was like, I don't think I sound like we are like Joe Rogan, but you know. Yeah, it's bad. I don't see that. They have phenomenal audio and spend a lot of money. And I think for our setup, I think we're doing all right if we sound like Joe Rogan. Right. (laughs) Considering, you know, it's just you basically doing it. Yeah. On a free garage band. As we said, good, good times had by all. Yeah, I mean, look, we try, guys. If you have tips or things that the, things that you think you know could help us sound better, or we could fix to make us sound better, let us know. Drop us a line. You know, don't don't uh, hate us. Thank you for so listening to the Waters Run Deep podcast. Yeah, Check us out on YouTube and follow us on Instagram at twrd underscore podcast. On with it. If you have a topic suggestion or would just like to send us a nasty gram, email us at the Waters Run Deep Podcast dot com. For lack of Please words, remember to rate and review on your platform of choice. It really helps us out with the algorithms to get new listeners to check us out. If you leave us a five-star yeah. review, 
We will read it on an episode and send you out some TWRD stickers. Till next time, run yeah. deep. Absolutely. Till next. I think to date we've made not even enough to buy one of us lunch. So no, not even at the dollar menu. <laughs> Well, not even have, definitely not a red lobster if they're getting rid of endless shrimp. Yeah, exactly. So come on, guys, take it easy on us. Give us a break. And if you want to be a, if a guest on here and and do it with us, and because you think you can do it better, we'd be glad to have you. Absolutely. Anyway, Absolutely. So next one: Twelve Lies of Christmas. That was a fun one, and I think. Uh, I really like that one. I yes, thought I our comparison to everything, I thought we did a really good job on that one. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we're into season two. And episode one, Skinwalker Ranch. We had our uh, cousin David on for that topic. Daniel. Daniel. What did I say, David? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. His brother. His brother. Daniel. We do that all the time, though, so it's not even like yeah. surprise. You I better like prepare both... yourself because you're going to see them soon. Yeah, I think they're both going <laughs> to give us side eyes when we do that, though. So I'm sure we're getting a side eye if either one of them are listening to us right now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, that was a great topic. Skinwalker Ranch is one of my favorite ones too. There's a lot of research going on there, a ton of a ton of um documentaries and stuff out there that it's just fascinating that whole area of stuff that's going on. There's the there's a uh what is it? So there's there's a couple ranches out that way in that vicinity within I, I'm gonna this is not accurate, but within a two hundred mile radius, I would guess that there's three ranches total besides Skinwalker Ranch. And I don't think, I don't know if we uh, mentioned this on the episode, but there's um, another ranch that's called the Blind Frog Ranch. And there's actually a, oh. uh, a uh, like series on History Channel that talks about it. There's like two seasons of it. Oh. And it's this guy that's like an oil magnet. For the one I get, I might be mistaken, but he's like an oil magnet and he bought this property because he was told there's like this hidden treasure on there from the uh Aztecs. So he, he bought the property and or the ranch and then um you know he's digging around and doing stuff looking for this gold. And at one point they they I don't know if they were drilling or digging into the earth, and all of a sudden these blind frogs jumped out of like what they were digging or drilling. Oh. Bro, like, how they were blind? I guess the the way their eyes were or whatever. Hmm. It's fascinating. They they go into it on the, the the in the show, um, and it's in that area, and they get a lot of a lot of weird stuff that happens on that property too. That's it's similar to the Skinwalker Ranch, and then the other one is uh, Space Wolf Lodge. Space is it Lodge or Space Space Wolf Ranch? It's a property, and it's like right adjacent to uh, Skinwalker Ranch, and it's it's similar that they, of course, have all this weird stuff. The guy had like a shipping container, um, Connex box. If you don't know what a Connex box shipping container is, this large metal containers that were on the the ship that hit the Key Bridge. Um, not funny. Sorry, it's not funny. Uh, they too soon, too soon. Yeah, too soon, too soon. So they they he had one of those on the ranch or for storage or whatever, and one night it was like literally picked up and like turned sideways, and there was no like tornado or anything in the area. Um, and it was also struck by lightning, and it's like a lot of weird, abnormal stuff has happened on that property. Uh, and it's crazy because it's all I don't think the weird stuff that's going on there is specific to. Skinwalker Ranch, which has that TV show on History Channel as well. I think it's just that area is the Uinta, Uinta Basin has got a lot going on. Have you heard? I was listening to a podcast about this serial killer in um, Indiana uh, called Herb. I don't know something, but apparently his house is super duper like it's still there and it has so much insane, um, like negative. Horses and stuff. We have to do an episode on it. But really? 
Yeah, it's really interesting. And like they've had like our, our favorite ghost hunters have been out there. Ghost adventures? Yeah. Really? Herb I Herb miss that. is the serial killers. No, wait, that's not it. That's from Shit's Creep. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong TV show. <laughs> Herb Baumeister is his name. What is this? Herb Baumeister. It's in he was Herb in, Herbert. Huh? Herb Herbert. Herb Herbert, my monster. Um, and his house in western Indiana or whatever is extremely haunted. And it was on, it's called Fox Hollow Farm. Never heard of this. Yeah, me either until I, the podcast I was listening to brought it up. But they think a lot of it is because that's where he committed most of his murders was at this house. Um, but the people who bought it were super, uh, like, fine with it. Like, they were like, whatever. Like, we don't care if this was a serial killer home. It's like a great place for our horses. And then they started experiencing, like, a ton of crazy. Oh, they literally... At this Fox Hollow farm, they uh, sell meat from their bison and their cows. So, oh, this is a, yeah, a whole thing. Well, I added it to our topics, so we can talk about that one day. Yeah, it's an 18-acre estate that was once the home of an alleged serial killer, and there's, like, all this just uh, feelings of it. The other interesting thing that the podcast was talking about that I was listening to was seeing a lot of serial killers homes or like places that killings happen were torn down like either by the state or by the people who bought it or whatever. So this is like one of the only like actual homes that are still intact of where the murders happened. Um, and the bodies were exposed there and all that. So interesting, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, good segue into uh, episode two of season two. Lizzie Borden, done by Anch. Did she do it or the uncle do it? She did not do it. She didn't I do think, it. I, I stand by the, she's innocent. I think the uncle did it. Yep. The uncle and the maid. Yep. Fair enough. All right. Episode three is time travel a thing. Did we invent mm-hmm. the future and return or is it a thing now? It is absolutely. That was when we had JMO on that. Oh yes, that's right. Yes, uh, JMO from Best Bootleggers and Bat. Is that is that right? Bootleggers and Bat. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. And he's the bassist. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah I, I think not- that was a good one. I I really like that one. We had a good conversation about it. My science was hot shit talking about it, but other than that, it was good. <laughs> Trying to. Piece all that shit together was a little bit of a struggle for me, but yeah, it was good. I think, um, I think it is a thing. I think it is a thing in the future, and I think that maybe some of the stuff that we're seeing in the skies, the, the government seeing in the skies, is maybe mm-hmm. these people that are visiting us from the future. You know, I can't believe somewhere in our timeline, in the past or future, whatever that that time travel hasn't been in, invented. You know, some sort of it. mask is from the future. Or he's a simulator at character. Yeah, he's an interesting character for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. All right. Speaking of serial killers, uh, Amanda did this topic and had Adam as a guest on uh, Devil in the White City, H.H. H. Holmes. H.H. H. Holmes. I like it. Um, I think it was a great introduction. Or, well, I guess Lizzie was the first introduction, but she was more of like a mass murderer. But um, I well, he was more of a mass murderer. Yeah, he was a. Well, he was definitely a serial killer. I don't feel like Lizzie Borden was would be defined as a serial killer. Yeah, no, yeah. she's. You're right. You're right. She's a mass murderer because she did it all at once, whereas he killed multiple right. people over a period. Of time. Okay, so fair okay. enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um. Yeah, I'd love to do some more episodes on serial killers. Um, I know they're not cultish, but I think that they have a little bit of a cult aspect to it. And I think there's some good ones, not like not cultish or, or um, oh, cool. uh, yes, I feel like and like they're you know, cult adjacent. 
I know they're not like conspiracy theory, but are conspiracy theory adjacent. And I think there's sure. some really interesting thoughts behind serial killer. I was just talking to um a coworker of mine about it. We were talking now about how serial, and I don't remember if we talked about this in the episode, but how like serial killers aren't as common because there's just such an easier, well, yeah, there's such an easier uh, way to find them now with technology, like with blood and um, all of that. And then I was also recently listening to another podcast about a serial killer that was talking, I promise listeners, I listened to other things, but um, was talking about how the use of like ancestry.com and um, those kind of things have really actually helped solve a lot of cold cases and some like serial killer stuff. So I just think it's interesting and I would love to even talk more about even just the use of the DNA and all of that. Maybe throw some Mormonism in there, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I think that that, that's cool. I mean, I I like the serial killer stuff. Um, It's definitely a good, good topic for sure. I mean, there's definitely some strangeness in these people's thought processes. So, you know, whether it's um, their own developed, undeveloped or developed mental, you know, incapacity or it's, an outside force causing them to do it. Um, I definitely think it's a uh, interesting topic and fun conversation for sure. Um, all right, next one, Mari Island UFO incident. So I love my UFO topics, of course. Um, that one I'm on the fence whether it was legit or a hoax, but uh, it's similar to another case, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. But they just put an interesting documentary out that talk to one of the witnesses and say it's on Netflix and that whole uh it happened in Missouri but it, it was a pair and they were friends and they were fishing and a UFO came down and then this one's similar where it was a guy fishing or a couple guys fishing, and they saw stuff falling from the sky. And but they, I think there were, might be possible that uh, it was a hoax. Would that have been like space trash. I've been reading a lot about space trash, and like I read an article about this couple that came home from like a trip, and they had like a huge hole in their ceilings, and they found like this thing on their ground that was like basically space trash. Yeah, and the the one I was talking about is the it's, it's the, sh- the show on Netflix is the Files of the Unexplained, and it was the first episode, and it's called Pascagoula Alien Abduction. So it's these two guys that were out fishing and say they were abducted by these mechanical alien creatures. And the the one thing that makes me believe this is real, and this isn't Mari Island. This is another one that I would like to cover, but it's similar to Mari Island is they the two went to the police station and after the police left the room they hid a a, like a recorder tape recorder underneath the table and they left it recording when they the police left the room and you can hear the guys like legit talking about the incident not saying like hey we need to get our story straight let's make sure we say this let's make sure we say that like they were legit talking amongst each other about the incident as if like it really happened. And I thought that was like really fascinating. It makes me because you know, if you're bullshitting about it, you're gonna be talking about, hey, make sure we, you know, say this or say that, you know. Yeah, I was just confirming with each other, did it really yeah. happen? Were were we really here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty it's a fascinating story. And the guy was like really one of the guys like it, well, there's only one guy I think still alive that was involved in it, but you could tell the guy like went through something, you know. All right, another UFO, uh, and Aunt Margaret was apparently on a guest for this one. Good old Aunt Margaret, mm. Mother Margaret. No, 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 wrong Margaret. Amanda's oh. friend, Doctor Margaret. Yeah, there is a doctor. I terribly sorry, Doctor Margaret. I can't read. I literally yes. typed in Doctor Margaret in there. I know. I saw Margaret and assumed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. We'll, we'll fix that in post. No worries. I don't even know. Yes, I guess Dr. Margaret on that episode. That was a good one, too. It was a good alien one and a good, uh, in my opinion, uh, another side to 
that phenomenon for sure. I think I think my favorite about that one was our wacky world news <laughs> with the bears costumes. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. And then like the then we talked about the people in Alabama who got who, like the. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that yes. was insane. That was a good episode. Margaret is so fun. I love her. Yes, she is. Until you get to see her when you come visit. Yay! You get graduation and coming to the party. So awesome! I get to meet her in real life. Yes. Good stuff. All right. Episode seven, season two, Operation High Jump. We briefly talked about that one, I think, when uh, we were talking about the top episodes. And that mm-hmm. one was a good one. Um, I, I like that topic. And I, that's another one I think is has some legitimacy to it. If it did, it really happened, you know, not not completely the whole diary that I went through. I think some of that may be fabricated, but I think some of it was. I think some of it's real for sure. Yeah, I, I like that one. I liked all the, I guess, evidence or documentation of, you know, going through the journal and stuff. I thought I thought that was a really good topic that we did. Yeah, yeah. It was. De- right. I mean, I found it very interesting. Amanda, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I really liked it. Thought it was a good one, and I love that kind of stuff. Though I love that, like. We have so much facts, we're not believing it kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, episode eight, JMO uh, was the, the guest uh, host for this one, and he did a uh, con men. I think that was an awesome topic. Um, definitely fun to have somebody else present besides the three of us. We, I enjoy that a lot. Um, yeah, very fact. I love when other people do the group project. Yeah, I think it's fun. I think it, uh, Allows other people to dip their toe into this uh, craziness and, and, you know, gives a listeners a different side besides our uh, biasness of our own speech. Um, there we go. Episode nine, Birds Aren't Real. God, this, was this one was just, it was. Yes, it was. It, it's just so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Well, I like it's how you can start a movement. Like, I feel like I want to start a movement that, like, squirrels are trying to take over the world or something. Yeah, I think it's fascinating how he took, I mean, he's, he's in a sense, making fun of conspiracy theorists, which is okay. I mean, sometimes we need to be, you know, they need to be put in check. The shit that they believe sometimes is so out there that, how can you buy it? Um, there's a lot of it that I buy into. So I guess in some fashion, you can put me in that category as well. So I don't remove myself from that. And I'm sure people think some of the shit I believe is out there, but um, I think it's interesting how he, he was able to kind of prove that in a sense and, and show that don't buy everything you read, you know? Yeah. I, I think it's, a, I mean, I think it was definitely important for, because I think we talked about it in this episode where we're just so inundated with information and you just believe the first thing that you hear and him, you know, kind of saying like, this is an anti-conspiracy in a way, but just starting a movement. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Episode 10, little green men, Kelly, Kentucky. Where are you guys at with that? I got to read my notes on that one. Can you repeat that? I was having a moment. So little green men, it's a Kelly, Kentucky where the family. Oh, this was the family. This was the family that just all of their. They were shooting the shit out account, of. Yeah. All their yeah. accounts just don't seem plausible at yeah. all. Yeah. 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 If you, if you, if a presenter pieces that story together, they <laughs> can make it sound a hundred percent factual. But if you present, all the facts, I feel like it makes it more implausible. That's one thing about that one that kind of is like, hmm, I can kind of see this, but I feel like they're trying to sell me on it too much, you know? Agreed. Like, it would be if I wrote a story about, you know, UFO. (laughs) All right. Episode 11, JFK. Where are we at with that? Oh, I, I think 
Yeah, I, I really like this one that we did too. I you know I've been saying this a lot, but I, I think us watching the tape together on it and trying to debunk it, I think we're all in agreement. Like there's definitely a conspiracy behind it. I wholeheartedly think that I believe that there was some type of shot. It spooked the guy behind him, this the secret agent. He shot JFK, but Obviously, the government didn't want to say that. So, yeah, I think there's something hidden there for whatever reason. Um, there's there were so many people that whether it was a mob, whether it was the CIA, whether it was who got who the hell knows. But I think somebody did it outside of uh, Lee Harvey Oswald that yep. they had to cover it up. You know, they couldn't come out and say it. I think they just scrambled. And they did did what they had to do. And I mean, just watching the video, like us dissecting, like how many people were actually there? Like this is the president of the United States and he didn't have that much of a crowd and the crowd didn't follow him. Yeah, it was like the where it happened, there was like nobody. But other parts yeah. of the video, there was like a shit ton of people. And, the, and where it happened would have been the best place to see him because it was such a wide open area that you could have packed a ton of people. Exactly. And I feel like he's still like one of America's favorite presidents. So you'd think they'd come in droves. Yeah. Yep. All right. Episode 12, the cult of Trump. Cults part two. It's so funny that we went from like the probably a very famous like president who definitely had his demons for sure. Like not saying that Kennedy was perfect to talking about another president that you know brings us lots of good trolls and is a troll himself wait did i say that i'm so sorry please wait that out <laughs> yeah our worst it's... recorded audio episode apparently so yes Just like joe rogan <laughs> I think joe rogan was pro-trump no 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 around for the, to realize that can i have to read you something hold on i gotta find it because it was so I fantastic. Think, well, why are um, you looking for it? Most of those people, there is still people that absolutely love Trump, but I think a lot of people also are just like the lesser of two evils in a sense. And I think they're just, they lean that way because of the lesser of two evils in their mind. Um, but so this is a post. And the title says, teaching my first history course this semester has been rewarding, but I don't know what to do with this student. And the student, it is a written thing that says, the Battle of Gettysburg. Our union was saved by the immortal heroes of Gettysburg. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. The Battle of Gettysburg, what is an unbelievable, I mean, It was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible and so beautiful in so many ways. Did Did Trump write this for him? Boys, listen, Gettysburg, Gettysburg, first of all, this wonderful, nobody's seen anything like Gettysburg ever. Not in the history of man. Someone would say Gettysburg was the greatest. It's unbelievable. That's what they tell me. It's what I hear. That it's the greatest. I want you to get to read this. And can can his, I read this in his voice? Please. A lot. Because it's hysterical. And like what he's saying is exactly what this. So this actually is from a speech that Donald J. Trump wrote. The union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg. Gettysburg. What an unbelievable battle that was. The battle of Gettysburg. Oh, what an unbelievable. I, I mean... It was so much and so interesting and vicious and horrible and beautiful and so many different ways. It represented such a big portion of the... Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm screwed Now up. you're going like... It represented such a big portion of the success of this country. Gettysburg, wow. Wow. I, 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 go, I, go, I go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania just to look and watch. And a statement... I need this bigger. Send this to me. In a t- it says, I can't, I'll I can't finish it off. Uh, he <laughs> says, um, God, I wish we had that on the episode. <laughs> the statement of Robert E. Lee, who, who's no longer in favor. Did, 
you ever notice that he's no longer in favor. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. Never fight uphill. They were fighting uphill. Never he fight said, uphill. "Well, what? That was a big mistake. He lost his great general, and they were fighting. Never fight uphill, me boys. But it was too late." That was literally a. This is literally an actual word for word speech from a speech that Trump gave, and that honestly, I wish I had that for the article because I was like. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Do you like Gettysburg and then do the Gettysburg address and then put that text uh, there? I just wanted to say, never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. <laughs> but I don't, know, I don't know why Robert E. Lee is no longer in favor. Maybe because he fought for the Confederate and was against our country? I don't know. Anyways. Sorry, probably get some more hate mail. It's my thought. I'll reply, Chris. I'll respond with a custom video responding to them as Trump in case they, they want something back. <laughs> There's our Patreon right there. There is our Patreon. We have now created it. Adam's guilty of spray tan, though. Uh, it'll be audio. We'll record audio. <laughs> Much, please. Much, um, like, my so I'll one more thing. Myself mid sentence, just like him. First of all, Gettysburg, Kirk, it was a big war. Some would say the biggest wars. <laughs> now, by the way, that would be shitting myself. <laughs> mid sentence. Um. So when mom got her back surgery, like got her fit, her stimulator removed, did I tell you all this? Um, they had to put on this like cleaner to like clean the spot. And it, it makes your neck. Iodine? It's not iodine because she's it's like iodine now. Okay. But they put on to clean the spot. And I made a joke and I was like, oh, mom, you're getting a tan. And the nurse leaned over and she's like, yes, we like to call it the Mr. President. <laughs> I bet your mother loved that. <laughs> laughing. And mom didn't get it until I explained it to her. And she's like, that's terrible. But I thought it was great. Sounds too exciting. Anyways. That's hilarious. As we were saying. And then our last episode for season two, which just got released. Ah, uh, Yeah. That nice. woman, Chris has spent... <laughs> I think you're on week two with her. Week three. Yeah, I think. That's about right. How you feeling? How's it going? Do you feel pity for me yet? Uh, she's. I mean, I have a lot of fun with her. I think. Uh, <laughs> Someone asked him. Yeah, I think. Uh, My mother. Great. Did yeah. she forget she had crab cakes in the oven and sprinted to them? No, she with has lightning cooked, reflexes. Yeah, oh my gosh, that's whenever she's going slow. We're like, my crab cakes. Crab cakes. So she had crab cakes in the oven when Andrew's visiting and she's right. talking to us and she's like, oh. she's like, gets up and like runs to the kitchen. You say a bolt. And all, all of us are like, we've never seen her move that fast. <laughs> it's been years since she's moved that fast. Um, she's going pretty good for being a nine toe sloth. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're having fun with Maggie. And has she told you more about this story? A little bit. She did have a follow up um, about it. I can't remember what it was, but she does have a follow up. And actually, you know where I'm at right now. I am only about fifty minutes from. Uh, Is she going to make you area. take her? I. She kind of talked about it, and if I was here, I feel like we talked about it on the. Uh, yeah, if episode. I was here for a little bit longer than a long weekend, I probably would. To be honest. Oh man, she would love it. I think it would be a great time. She would love it. I love that your dad called me the other day trying to convince me that he left her at the gas station. If my mom wasn't laughing in the background, I think, but you were, man, you pulled her up so fast. I was like, I don't think your dad realized that I did actually have a tracker on her. Well, I, I floated the idea. I said, I bet you she has a way to track her. <laughs> yeah, didn't you put Lojack on her phone? Uh, yeah, with Apple phones, you can share location. And so I put that on her phone that I can see where she's at. 
So Uncle Jack Pod, they're driving from Pennsylvania to Florida. And he's like, hey, do you have a tracker on your mom? We left her at the gas station. And I was like, that's funny because she's driving down 95 right now. She must have found a trucker. Hope she puts out. <laughs> and Because sure, no one rides for free. So hard. The best part is I answered the phone in the middle of a junior league meeting because I thought maybe something had happened to her because, you know, I don't know. And, and then I'm like playing along and they're all watching me. And I'm like, I shouldn't talk about my mom being a whore with the truckers. <laughs> At least not in public. We can talk about it in private. I'm right. sure the girls love that. The humor. My family yeah, does have a more. wonderful sense of humor. I like dark humor. It's the best. So, you know, we deal with the trauma. <laughs> Bill, what other families could you be like, do you want to see how big my bookers are and just send pictures? <laughs> like well, literally I'm what I've done. Share that. Like, I will. I'm still waiting for my appendix framed picture. Your what? My Christmas present. Your oh, framed appendix? appendix picture. Yes. You could do like a collage. Oh my gosh. Of all the medical do stuff. Do you want to hear how sick I am? Like how sick I am dealing with trauma. So I turned to Adam the other day because I have a picture of the like my ovary and the uh, ectopic pregnancy. And I was like, oh, baby's first picture. <laughs> We're going to hell. <laughs> God, I love it. <laughs> I'll meet you there. No Adam, worries. And my mom go, or Adam goes, Amanda, you can't do that. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> it's the only way we can deal with the drama. <laughs> it is. Our unhealthy co- coping mechanism. <laughs> um, I will say, though, so for our listeners, um, I am graduating in like two weeks um, with my PhD. And we have a lot of family coming, a lot of friends. It's going to be super exciting. But my favorite part about this whole thing is explaining to Adam's parents who decided last minute they were coming, how many people were going to be in and around our house. And I'm like naming all these people. I'm like, oh, Uncle Jack, Aunt Cherry, Aunt Moni, Aunt Cherry, all these people. And they're like, that's a lot of people. Oh, my God. Speak of the devil. And she arrived. Hi. My baby. Yes, that's my baby. I love my baby. Yes. This is counting the days. My favorite one. My baby. Two days left. I'm so sorry you're not here. But he gets all my love. Oh, she's trying to make you jealous. I thought she was calling Chris. Are you balding up top? What's going on with the hair? Oh, she can't hear you. I really can't hear me. If you were balding up top, what was going on with the hair? Me and my baby. Just if you're balding. My, oh. <laughs> Mark, crab cakes. My baby. I, I don't think she can still hear us. My baby. Do you guys got all your work done for the next weekend? Um, no, Margaret, because it is snowing. You're outside. not there. Yeah. Well, what's the snow have to do with it? How would you like me to do things when it's less than 30 degrees and it's snowing? Snowing like what? Like sh- cats and fucking dogs. Like the heat's back on. And like it's cold, on. mom. It's snowing. I turned it up to 70. You know the white the stuff that comes from the sky? That's Turn the heat up to 70? You have never done that in the two years I lived there. That's why I use that as a metric of how cold it's been. Yes, I have turned it up a couple times. But I will say that the month you've been gone, our electric bill was only sixty dollars. So mm. you might have to be raising some rent. You didn't get one yet from me yet. You're, you're, they can track it though. What you how say? do they track it? Um, that is you can go and- I think yeah. when you're, I think what uh, the bill is actually is it's getting off set. By it's the getting off set because of the solar panel because it's it's lighter now. Oh yeah, because I send heat to you from Florida. Yeah, I think because we're in Florida. Yes, I don't have that. What? Where are you? And what did you say? Fucking cold, Colorado. Yeah, and you uh-huh. get to come back and live here. So I hope you love we're it. In Florida. Are you gonna live in Florida with Uncle Jack and Aunt Sherry? I could. I don't know about that. I could go back to Pennsylvania too. 
<laughs> Chris's face. I have a. Hey, you know, in Colorado, I have a. Um, uh, you have a tower. My tower. I have a dungeon in Pennsylvania. That's where you belong, Angela. I'm going to see you in a couple weeks or less. Hmm. You better be nice because I could put you in the duck. He said that. <laughs> Angela. Angela. <laughs> Your daughter said it, not me. Oh. I can't follow these green. Did she celebrating 20? 420 also? Did you up her meds? Oh, apparently. Today, 420, and you didn't tell me? <laughs> Christopher. All those weed stores we went to. It's by. her favorite holiday. How dare you? Oh, my God. Mark, it's sh- it's in, sh- in Denver, uh, they're celebrating yeah. it. Yeah. See what you're missing out on? You could be I, there. I can't believe I missed 420. I can't believe it. <sighs> you know, my generation started it. Yeah, tell us the history of it. The history of it? Yeah, why is, do we pick April 20th? Is that... um. At school and work, they would say, I'd meet you in the court at 420. And that's when they let up. Is that? I don't think that's right. I think it is. That sounds pretty good. I mean, it actually seems like a better reason than I've gotten from other people I've asked. Let's Google. What did they say? Other people. Um, Adam said. Oh, okay. So apparently the origins of the term 420 adrenaline. Generally, were long murky. Some claim to refer to a police code for marijuana possession, or that it was derived from Bob Dylan's song "Rainy Day Women," number twelve and thirty-five, with its reference that everyone must get stoned. And then four twenty is the product of twelve times thirty-five. Some people say it was about why with the math. Why with the math? I know that the math one doesn't seem right because I don't think I could do math high. What did the time one? Um, it says in 1971, a group of high school students in San Rafael, California, known as the Waldos, used the term 420 as a code word to meet at 4:20 p.m. to search for an abandoned can- cannabis crop, and the term evolved from their original plan and became slang for marijuana consumption, especially around 4:20 p.m. Who's right? All right. I mean, she would have. I would have given her. We started it in 1970, but it went through 71. All right, I can. I can. Okay, buy that. okay, Marg. I mean, right. that that was you. It's that the was only your generation. Funny that you know. I can buy it. So, how did you go from being a cool hippie person to somebody who's wearing a Bucky's T-shirt and saying "Go Trump"? <laughs> Because we, when you moved, we got rid of all of her paraphernalia. Generation that they went from that to hey, that's who's trolling us right now. So we have to respect them. It's our time. Gettysburg. Gettysburg. <laughs> Nobody fought a better Gettysburg <laughs> than Donald Trump. If I w- if, if if I manned. The airports. Uh, I think we should just close it out Gettysburg. with Adam talking about the airports during Gettysburg. What, what was the hill? What was the hill line? Nobody fights on the hill. <laughs> uh, you don't what, fight why a hill? Don't fight. Yeah. Which, which I think he was referring to Antietam. Uh, yeah, the term. I think it really probably was a quote from Robert E. Lee. I just don't think he said. Um, I will die on this hill, hell, me boys. I don't think he said me That's boys. That's what it is. Never. I don't think that boys. was Irish. <laughs> no. And it has what he, he says, <laughs> but it highlights a couple little things on there and see people. I wish I'd never yeah. fight a pill, me boys. Never fight a pill. That was my attempt on an Irish accent. I'm not very good at Irish accents. Me mm. boys. You are sometimes. Right. You gotta get it right. Uh, well, I think it's time to close out this episode because yes. the more Adam smokes, the more we're going to get Trump impressions and... <laughs> Honestly, they go from Trump impressions to just really bad impressions of I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, Plus, thank we everyone. have a basketball game to watch. Go Nugget. <laughs> go Nugs. Go Nugs. All right, friends. Well, thank you for joining us on another episode of the Waters Run Deep podcast. Thank you, Adam, for joining us as well and celebrating a little bit. Um, 
we'll catch everybody next time. I hope to uh, continue this, and it's been a fun two seasons, and you know things have changed for you know for the better, and we're making some, you know making things happen. So we're gonna keep on keeping on, and until next time, don't forget to rate and review on your platform of choice, and uh, you know tell your friends. Until next time.